lots and lots of good construction technologies. Good thing is many of the uh, things which are used for constructing this, those people have started getting export orders. Somebody from Rajkot, somebody from Surat, they have already started getting export orders because the precision is very much in these equipment, right? So once we demonstrate our work on such a high precision construction site, then the world takes note and people start demanding it. So these large crates, the, each of these girders is like 1,100 tons, like 500 trucks carrying simultaneously. So, and uh, it picks up and launches one after the other. Do we have a video in this? No, we don't have the videos. Maybe I'll explain. So, we construct all the pillars one by one. And uh, as we construct the pillars, let's say these are the pillars, right? This pillar, this pillar. Then next one is, uh, this is the next pillar on which the girder will be launched. So, the girders come by the transporter up there on top. You can see this 216 wheel transporter. Then this launching gantry will pick up the girder and launch it on top of, uh, from one one girder to the uh, one pillar to the next pillar. So that way you get a very rapid pace of construction. This is uh, this kind of construction technology is used, I understand, only in some four or five countries, not more than that. That's the that's the level of advancement we are getting into our country. And once we do these kind of projects, then doing many other projects become very reasonably easy, right? I come to something which is very close to Bangalorean's heart, so <laughs> semiconductor. And again, within a very short period of time, most countries have taken uh, 17, 18 months, 16 months to take a first decision from their policy making. We have been able to do within that short time frame of 12, 13 months. First January is when we uploaded the policy, right? And we uh, haven't announced the names yet, but I can assure you, some really big names have decided to set up their uh, units in India and uh, we should be taking the uh, systems to cabinet approval, proposals to cabinet approval very soon. This will spawn a totally, totally new demand for electronics manufacturing, which is today $87 billion. This will really be a, book, a very big boost for our electronics manufacturing, for, for our design progress. Lots of work happening on the design uh, led and Bangalore, Hyderabad, uh, Pune, and Chennai, and Gurgaon. These are the five large design bases in the country. And people are taking note of it all over the world. Even though the other countries in the world have uh, put in much bigger dollars, but people want to come to India because of our talent availability. And we have tied up with 86 institutions so far within one year and created courses for semiconductor design, specific courses for semiconductor design. So that we should be able to generate, we should be able to develop 86,000 talent over a period of 10 years. That's the challenge we have taken in the entire design program. So that's going great. Electronics manufacturing, we have become so small quiz. In terms of cell phone manufacturing, what is our standing in the world? Second. So we are already second in the world, right? And very soon we should become number one because many of the large Manufacturers, I won't take the names because of my responsibility, but uh, they are shifting their entire supply chains to India. So the criticism uh, the thing, the entire supply chains are getting shifted to India. And already we have 25 lakh employment in uh, electronics manufacturing, and it is moving very rapidly towards almost one. Uh, the 25 lakh is the direct. If you add the indirect, straight indirect, then it is about 80 lakh employment in electronics manufacturing and it is moving towards one crore very rapidly. 5G launch was a, uh, it was a great success. Thank you so much for all your support. And good thing was that uh, industry thought that they will be uh, getting about five, six months to, uh, I mean, before the spectrum allocation comes, they got it within 24 hours. So, <laughs> they didn't get a chance. So they didn't get a chance. A would try to pull B's legs by saying that no, my spectrum keep it here, his spectrum keep it there. Everything got managed. So within 24 hours they got this thing. And so much has happened in telecom reforms that uh, typically a tower commission used to take anybody connected with tower business here. No. So then I can die also. 
<laughs> kidding, just kidding. So I am telling the truth. So um, normally it used to take seven eight months for uh, tower to get its all permissions, right? Now imagine today about eighty five percent of the applications proposals which come, how much time does it take? Make a guess. Three days. Better guess. More aggressive guess. Three hours. Three hours. More aggressive guess. Wow. Thirty minutes. More aggressive guess. Actually zero. You press the enter button and your approval comes. It's only the speed of internet uh, chips which matters now. It's that good, and uh, industry is really happy with it. And if you take the feedback from telecom guys, they will tell you how much their lives have changed, how much new spectrum they have bought, how much they are able to now focus on technology. How much they are able to focus on um, on the uh, investments, quality of service, all that stuff. Anybody from telecom service here? I'm surprised Bangaloreans don't have telecom service, guys. Sir, ask them. How things have changed? Absolutely, sir. I think it's been best uh, to happen for the industry. Things have changed. Absolutely, sir. Excellent. Absolutely, because of the new RRW policy that the government of India has come up with, and uh, it's it's been amazing. Uh, transformation, I, sh I should say, and uh, thank you very much for that. Big and round of applause. Thank you. I was eagerly waiting for the telecom bill. Yes, it's going to be come out. It's very soon. It will come out in a very good form. What I wanted to tell you is, for 70, 80 years, uh, the telecom sector in country did not have its own telecom technology stack. We will give the target that why can't we have our own 4G and 5G technology stack. Actually, the country had started on 3G and 2G also, but 2G went into a totally different spin. People wanted 2G to be used for something else and uh, not for technology development. But now things are different. And uh, so, by now, actually, it's completed the work completed in April of this year. We have a world class India telecom stack for 4G and 5G ready. The stack has been tested for 5 million simultaneous calls. And now it is getting recognized and tested for 10 million simultaneous calls. And we have got, already got inquiries from Europe, from America, from multiple places where people would like to use the Indian telecom stack. Imagine the the soft power that we are able to export, right? We have the India stack, we have the India telecom stack, we have the whole IT industry out here, we have world's third largest startup ecosystem. Imagine eight years ago when Prime Minister launched the Digital India, Startup India, Make in India initiatives, the whole of Congress ecosystem was basically criticizing it, calling it Jumle Baji, calling it all kind of stuff. And see the difference today. Today we are second largest manufacturer of cell phones, right? Defense equipment, the, the guns which were used for giving 21 gun salute on the 15th August were all made in India, right? I'm sure you are aware of that. They were made in India, right? We have started exporting defense equipment. We will very soon be exporting. We actually started one uh, consignment right now. But we will soon become a major exporter of railway equipment. Telecom equipment, which was never even considered as a as an option in India, today we have 42 companies manufacturing telecom equipment, and I can vouch that five of them will become real big champions. So that is the kind of journey that Prime Minister Modi ji is giving, that thrust, that direction which is giving to the country. These are the radios on top of a tower, and this was unbelievable that we can never manufacture or design them in India. And today is part of the India Telecom stack, which is a collaboration between CDOT and Tata's. Uh, it has become a reality. Manufactured at world-class standards, world-class technology, and actually a step better than the uh, uh, global suppliers because we, uh, because we didn't have the legacy to wind us down. So we were able to actually do a technology step change in designing this. I'll come to one very small portion. We also know that the world is going through very difficult times, right? 
this is the time when the whole world is going through a very difficult period, especially the West. And uh, compared to that, India is being called out as a bright spot by people like the Economist, people like the Financial Times, the IMF. And Economist and Financial Times, great newspapers, I respect them a lot. They have always been very critical of India. They have rarely said anything good about what we do here. But this is the time when Economist says that one Indian, the Indian economy remains a bright spot in South Asia. Then Morgan Stanley comes and says that uh, India will become the third largest economy for, by 2027. Isn't it a matter of pride? We already overtook the people who ruled <coughs> us. And, uh, <laughs> Right? It really feels good. At least as as an Indian, I feel so proud of it because 2014 we were at death rank. When I went to Watton, my professors would show the uh, list of in world's countries and then say that one million plus country and uh, not even in top ten. One used to feel so miserable, right? And today, I'm sure the students who would be going there in the same class of Professor Abel, they would feel proud of India. They cannot, Professor cannot say that anymore, right? So that's the pride, that's the pride. But what I wanted to share with you is that this is not a fluke. This is not something which has happened just like that. This is not something which has happened just by chance. There is a good design behind it. There is a good strategy behind it. And if you take the example, this is the world's position today. Um, these are the top seven economies. Any economy after economy, they are having inflation, which is like once in 40 years, kind of like 40 years highest, right? Each one of them, let's say US, today 1.7% growth and next year's growth is projected to be half a percent and inflation is 8% plus, next year's inflation is projected to be 5 plus, 6 plus, right? China is still struggling with COVID, still struggling with lockdowns and supply chain disruptions and vaccination. Japan in perpetual uh, issues, right? Then Germany, again a very strong industrial economy but having a very low growth at this point of time and very high inflation. Compared to all these countries, India stands as a bright spot because of a high growth and moderate inflation. And that was possible. Uh, these are figures about inflation. If you want, I can cover it. Inflation wise, when people criticize us, especially the opposition parties, they should see the global scenario. If we see the three things which affect common citizens' uh, life, food, housing and energy, food which would cost 100 rupees uh, one year back in US today cost 125 rupees, right? Um, in Germany it cost 133 rupees. India it is still 150. That is significantly better than the global standards. And food is not something where technology, all kind of stuff, but still we are able to moderate the inflation. Housing, cement, steel, all the materials if it used to cost 100 rupees a year back, today it is 121 and 130 rupees in US, Germany, UK. India it is only 106 rupees, right? It's a great, 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 great effort compared to the other countries. Energy again, which affects us big way. US is 112 today, uh, Germany is 162, UK of course almost double. And Germany, US, UK are same, similar to us because they also don't produce. US is a big producer of natural gas, so they have uh, and so, what I wanted to say is that all these things are effort, a concerted effort, a thought through strategy, a very clear direction, a lot of, lot of what you say, uh, patience, a lot of, uh, there is a word in Hindi called stirita, right? Uh, when um, um, you are not taking an action in haste, you are deciding things after considering everything, that's Prime Minister's style. If you interact with him, he is one of the most intent listeners I have seen in my life. I haven't seen a person who is a better listener than him. I have done presentations which were 
45 pages, numbers, 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 numbers. And he wouldn't yawn even for one second. And he would so intently take in those numbers and taking those ideas and concepts. It's phenomenal. He takes in lots of input from multiple sources and then using his experience, he takes the final part. So that's the reason why today we are in such a great shape. If you look at the West, West focused purely on consumption, 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 right? The balance sheet of, uh, balance sheets of US Fed, uh, ECB, uh, the Bank of England and the Bank of Japan, in uh, close to one and a half years, it increased by $9 trillion. So $9 trillion were pumped in, printed and given away for consumption. So equivalent of that, if you say, India's entire budget is 40 lakh crore, right? 40 trillion rupees. It is like almost 25 years of what we, central government would have spent in India, they have spent in one and a half years, two years. And that is the reason behind there. They have great economists, one of our former governor of, who doesn't like semiconductors, who doesn't like electronics manufacturing, who thinks that we are making a big mistake by focusing on make in India. So, I can have a debate with him any day. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's such experts who gave all this advice to the Western countries and that's where they are today. And we are in a very comfortable position because very well thought out investment led strategy in the budget of 21 PM allocated 5.5 lakh crore for investment. In the budget of 22, he invested, uh, the investment allocation was 7.5 lakh crore and the coming budget will follow the same trend. So, it's a very well thought out, well considered, well researched, well studied, having good logic behind it, having, it's a, it's a strategy which makes sense and it's working. It's giving the results. In terms of our investment in the country, it has ramped up to 19 lakh crore every quarter, right? People say that it has the private investment kicked in. This is the data which shows that this private investment has kicked in. Most of the, uh, I mean, as a structural point, uh, investment as a percentage of our total GDP has come up from 29 to 31 percent. Uh, bank credit is at one of its highest in many years, at 18 percent. Capacity utilization has gone up to 75, 80 percent. Many industry, many industries, it has gone up beyond 85 percent. Right. So those changes have happened. The results are in front of us. In terms of inflation. If you just look the historical data, this is not our data, party data, this is World Bank data, right? This is data that is straight away downloaded from World Bank. Any of the Congress periods, inflation has been high. So, Congress cannot blame us for inflation when the global conditions, as we saw in one of the previous slides, global, global conditions are very bad, despite that we have a moderate inflation. So, anywhere in the past we compare Unemployment has also been higher during the Congress Congress. Unemployment data in World Bank was available from 91 only. Before that, there was no data. So this is from 91. These are all data which can you can download data and you can do your own analysis. Nothing which I'm trying to sell here. The COVID impact has already tapered out and inflation, the employment thing, employment is coming. If you look at the formal employment, the formal employment which is measured in in terms of uh, provident fund registrations, PF registrations. Right? Um, pre COVID, it was about 6 lakh per month on an average. Um, now the COVID impact has gone down, gone down, and today we are, because of this investment strategy, and with every investment, new jobs are created, right? Investment happens, new factories open, new projects come up. People in the railway industry are today saying that we, are, we don't have enough people because our capex has now gone up to. Close, close to a lakh and ninety thousand crore, right? So it is. Uh, I mean, it's phenomenal. Our uh, uh, during Congress times, it used to be four kilometers per day of new tracks. Now we are doing twelve kilometers a day, and uh, boss is not happy. Boss is that fourteen, twelve is not enough. So he, next year our target is sixteen, and the year after that already he has given the target, uh, election or no election, right? So he says that in. After, uh, the year after that, you have to do 20 kilometers a day. So, boss, our team is like. <laughs> so, that kind of thing is happening, and that is creating jobs. That is creating good capacity utilization. That is creating a momentum in the economy. And from 6 lakh per month 
in the financial year 21-22, PF registrations net, this is net number, new minus exit plus rejoin, right, on minus 2 plus 3. So net numbers, not, I'm just not saying the new numbers. This is all, I mean, absolutely clear calculations. You can download your data and do yourself. Um, so net, net additions job is today about 15 lakh per. It's not a small number. And this number is on track to go to 17, 18 lakh per month. And subsequent years, it should go to 20 lakh per month. So that's the economic direction, that's the technology direction. I gave us a few examples of what we are doing, uh, construction, in terms of technology, in terms of legal framework, legal framework for the digital economy. We are coming up with a very comprehensive legal framework where three horizontals and multiple verticals, right? The three horizontals are telecom bill, and uh, we've already come up, we've already redrafted that. This is the inputs we received, and it should be published, new draft should be published very soon. And then the data production bill, you must have seen both the bills. Uh, somebody as critical of us as Malayala Manor Manorama, they have praised the language of the bills. They say that yes, it is understood by everybody, it's very good language. PM gave us a framework called Saral Framework. He, he, in his viewpoint, in his worldview, a law should be understandable by a person who simply is able to read. Right? It shouldn't be complex legally. It should be very simple, very easy to understand. So that kind of thing is happening in the country. That's why we are today in a very good, comfortable uh, six to eight percent GDP growth path. And uh, this is the journey, friends. And I welcome you all in this journey. And the 10th position in 2015, where we are in uh, fifth position today, we meet once again very soon when we are in fourth and third positions. Thank you.